And at this time, Gavin Jennings will deliver the message. loud to me. Um, everyone can hear me okay? I'll try not to be too loud. But. <laughs> um, but it's pretty loud up here, so I might get quieter so I don't deafen myself. But um, thank you all for uh, coming out today. Um, I'm not sure how the video goes, but I'll start with a welcome. Uh, um, thankful to be here, uh, filling in for Pastor Andrew. I always appreciate that he asked me uh, to do this. Um, I've enjoyed listening to his messages on uh, YouTube, the opportunity to listen to those. Um, I've appreciated that. Uh, he always does such a great job, so I don't feel adequate sometimes to fill in for him, but I do appreciate uh, his willingness to let me come. And uh, uh, thank you for having me today. Um, I uh, appreciate uh, the hospitality everyone always shows when we come here, um, always welcoming, uh, and I appreciate that. Thankful for, as I already mentioned, the weather. We were a little concerned about that, I guess, but. Uh, it's good. Right now the sun's not out. I won't get too sunburned or anything like that. So hopefully it'll stay that way. Um, we'll be in uh, Psalm 34 um, for the main part of what I want to get to. It'll be a little bit before we get there. Uh, but if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Psalm 34. And what I want to talk about today, um, I was thinking about it when I started working on the message. Um, it was about the time of the end of the school year for Carol Christian um, graduation time and fortunately we were able to work it out um, to have graduation but at the same time the seniors and all the underclassmen missed out on several months of uh, of their school time and uh, you know we're thinking about that generally they would say oh a little time off school that's great but then you realize what you're missing out on by having that and uh, I was just thinking about that a little bit with with all of us missing out on different things uh, as I said the seniors and uh, the last few months of their uh, their time in school, um, if you happen to have lost a loved one, you aren't able to um, really have that get together that you would normally have. And now, while it's a a sad time, uh, it's an important part of healing. I think a lot of times to be able to get together with sometimes with people you haven't seen to reminisce, uh, and a lot of people have missed out on that. A gathering can only be a couple people, or somebody's in a hospital stay and they don't have that companionship of family being able to be there. Um, and on a lesser scale, planned vacations that we might have missed out on or, or just get together as parties and even just that interaction with uh, um, those around us that we're used to having that we probably take a lot for granted. Uh, so I was thinking about that a little bit and the idea of just missing out. And um, in today's society with social media and all those kinds of things, consumerism, all those things, uh, we tend to feel like we're missing out a lot on things, and um, I think it's a normal thing to feel that way, to deal with that a little bit as a human. Um, I, it's nothing that's new to us. Um, we look back at Adam and Eve, and they had a fear of missing out. And I guess it's actually a term these days of, I guess it's FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. Um, and it's something that I think we all suffer from. Like I said, it goes all the way back to the first uh, two in Adam and Eve, and that's where the... Uh, fell into sin because they felt like they were missing out on something. Um, and like I said, I think it's normal for us to feel like we might be missing out on something, but um, because we like to be in control. That's how we like things to be. We want to do what we feel like doing. Um, we like to focus on our timing. We want things to come in our time and when we want it to happen. Otherwise, we feel like we're missing out on something that we should be doing or something we'd be able to enjoy. Um, and it's easy to see how in the normal scheme of things, like I said, over the last few months, the things we missed out on, I think it's normal to feel that way. But there's a lot of ways that uh, when we feel like we're missing out on something, that can become dangerous to us. Because we get a focus on something that I can achieve, uh, an experience, an, an objective to reach. Uh, we begin to get to that where we're just leaving God out of it because we're so concerned with what we want to do. Uh, and uh, what that object might be that we're pursuing, that we might be afraid we're missing out on, that can change weekly, it can change daily, it can change by the moment um, based on what we see um, portrayed to us as something that can make us happy. Um, and like I said, it can become dangerous because we have that fear of missing out, so we're striving for that within our own minds. 
And uh, meanwhile, we're forgetting about having God involved in our life and the things that we want to pursue. Um, are we seeking God's will? Isaiah 30, 15, and 16. I have several verses I'll get to before I get to Psalm 34, so just hold your place there. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And ye would not, but ye said no, for we will flee upon horses, therefore shall ye flee. And we will ride upon the swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. And we can see there that the Lord promises us uh, safety, quietness, confidence, and strength uh, if we return to Him. But we say there, when we say this in our hearts, no, uh, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to do this thing. And we can see how that doesn't work out for us. And what we do there, uh, when we worry about what we're going to miss out on and pursue our own uh, desires and those things, is we leave God out of our way of uh, thinking. We disregard what His will might be. Um, so, just in general, I mentioned a few things that we might feel like we're missing out on, and I think it's normal and it's okay to miss, feel like you're missing out on something, and hopefully it drives us to when we are able to, to appreciate the relationships and the things we can take part in. Uh, but as Christians, uh, there are a few things uh, that are much worse to miss out on than the things I talked about before, whether it be a few months of school or a graduation for a senior, uh, a vacation, uh, a party, or something like that. No one wants to miss out on those things. Um, well... I shouldn't say that. I'm a homebody. I'm fine with missing out on things. It's, you know, I've seen a saying before, um, sorry I was late. I didn't really want to come in the first place kind of thing. But um, again, I'm a homebody and missing out on some things wasn't so bad for me. But as a Christian, there are some things that we might uh, miss out on that can be uh, truly detrimental to us in our walk. Uh, and I'll go through a couple of them before I get to Psalm 34. Uh, but the first one is, and I've touched on this a little bit already, is uh, missing out on God's best for our lives because we're seeking our idea of what's good. And um, we can all be guilty of that. Um, we don't want to wait on the Lord's timing. We think, I need to accomplish this, I need to achieve this, um, and I'm just going to go about it without any thought to what the Lord might want me to do. And we can look at Israel and see the many times that they struggle with that. I just looked up a few examples um, that I'll share uh, in Psalm 81, verses 10 to 16, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken unto my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up to their own heart's lust. And when I read that, I think of that missing out idea, and we're being driven by missing out on something. I've, so I gave them up to their own heart's lust, and they, they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should have soon subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of, of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Also Isaiah 48:18. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. And, you know, we see God's promises. I'm sure we've experienced God's goodness in a lot of ways in our life. Uh, and yet, uh, we are drawn to do our own thing so often. Um, because, like I said, our fear of missing out on something or something we have in our minds is our idea of, hey, this is good for me, this is what I want, without seeking the Lord's will. And Israel was doing this here. Um, and just the idea of our great, all-powerful, almighty God and His desire to bless us with His best and so many times we miss it because we're worried about our, our good or what we think is good. Uh, and it basically says there many times in those verses um, that we would have peace, uh, righteousness as a river, as the waves of the sea, just drowning us in his goodness uh, and his best for us. But no, I'm going to go my own way and I'm going to fulfill my own heart's lust. And we see um, the downfall of that. I was looking also in Haggai where it talks about uh, the people there and their... Um, their concern was in their own house, and it's talking about a building there, but um, we can see the same illustration in our lives, while God's house was in ruin. And, and God's best, God's will, we, we leave it to the side because we're so worried about and so busy focusing on um, what do I need to do and my timing and, and doing that. Uh, so God had allowed the Israelites to go after their idea of good, uh, and they suffered for it. And just like the Israelites, uh, God has our best, uh, in mind and eagerly wants to give it to us. Uh, but oftentimes we have better ideas for ourselves. Um, and again, listed in those verses, you know, because of their lack of faithfulness and their desire to fulfill their own lusts and fulfill their own uh, fear of missing out, 
uh, they missed out instead on peace, righteousness, fertility, prosperity, and so much more. One particular example was King Asa back in Second Chronicles, um, who generally when we look at his life, and even in the verses it says, overall he was a good king. Uh, but there were times where he had several downfalls and struggles um, because he took his eyes off of what God wanted, despite many times seeing God's blessing in his reign uh, and going a different way. Uh, he had his own good in, in mind at one time, and other times he had, hey, what is God's will uh, for my life? And the prophet Azariah said to him, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And that idea is true in our own lives. Uh, God is there, he is with us, and he is willing to pour out his blessings on us. Um, but we go our own way sometimes. And... Um, like I said, he had disappointments and downfalls. At his best moments, his hope was in God's strength, not his own. And at his worst moments, he trusted more in uh, either himself or in those around him than the Lord. Uh, and at the end of his life, um, which I think uh, it was probably, he was 39, I believe, so not a very long life, but at the end of it, um, he had a foot disease. Um, and I think this, is, this kind of sums up what we're talking about here, is missing out on uh, God's best, not seeking His will because we're just doing what we think is best. Uh, he had a foot disease that was exceeding great. And the verse says, Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And the very next verse, And Asa slept with his fathers in the 41st year. So within a couple years he had passed away. Uh, and, that, and that can be so true of us there. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Nothing wrong with seeking a doctor's advice. Uh, that's a good thing, but I think our first, show up, first thought when we are struggling with a health uh, concern or condition or something like that, give it to the Lord. He didn't do that. There's no mention of that here. He just said, let me see what the doctor says. They can help me out with no thought to the Lord. And like I said, many times in his life, he had sought the Lord's will, uh, but this time when he faced a crisis, um, a health concern, he didn't go to the Lord uh, for it. So missing out on God's good or our good for God's best, is what we should be striving to do. Put our desires, our lusts, our wants aside and say, Lord, I want your best, regardless of what I'm thinking in my own mind is my best um, for me. The second thing uh, that I wanted to look at is the idea of missing out on the joy of godly living for the fleeting pleasure of sin. And I think that's perfect. Uh, the hymn this morning, uh, how... You know, we're prone to wander, and we're prone to give ourselves up to uh, what we want to do. Despite God's goodness, as the song mentions, um, we're prone to wander. We uh, want to go our own way and do our own thing. As it says there, Lord, help your goodness to uh, keep me close to you. Um, and even once saved, this battle between the spirit and the flesh continues. Um, and if we choose to follow the world's way as far as doing what pleases us, as far as uh, sinful things and wrong living, uh, we suffer the difficulties of chastisement, of running from our loving Heavenly Father, and at the same time we miss out on the abundant blessings promised to the obedient. Um, and despite that, we can still be drawn uh, to the wrong things. And I know, I know about you, but it can be a frustration in my own life, and it's like we know better, we've seen God's goodness, we've seen how He's blessed, and yet we still, in that moment, when we see something we might miss out on or want to do our uh, a certain thing our way. We don't even think about the Lord and giving that uh, to Him. There are several verses uh, that I'll read quickly here um, that kind of contrast the two sides of seeking um, doing our life in a godly way or doing it uh, with our own lusts and desires in mind. Ver uh, Psalm 16, 3 through 6. But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names uh, into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen to me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. All right, so again, there, there are blessings for living right. There are sorrows that shall be multiplied if we hasten after another God or going after our own ideals. Basically, there that idea of idolatry. I'm putting this before God in my life. Uh, Matthew 6, 19 to 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt 
and where thieves do not break through and steal. Uh, Galatians 6, 8, and 9, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And then one more, John 10, 10. Uh, these are all pretty familiar verses to us, but John 10, 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And just in these verses, what do we get by missing out on that sinful living that we talked about? We delight the Lord. We receive joy now and for eternity. We live an abundant life. And that's not to say we won't have hardships, but we know that God will sustain us and bless us through it. Uh, we avoid short-term and long-term sorrow. We avoid loss, death, and destruction. And that's just the few things listed in these verses here. Um, I like Peter's response to Jesus when he's talking to him. And, um, and Peter had his shortcomings and falls where his idea was, hey, how can I do self-preservation here um, when he denied Christ and those kinds of things. But in this moment, uh, his view is what ours should be as far as, hey, am I going to go my own way and live my own life and pursue worldly pleasures? Where am I going to do what pleases the Lord? John 6, 67 and 68. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And just to paraphrase that there, the way I see Peter saying that, he's like, go away? Why would we go away? Um, you know, this is where the getting's good. All right? And we've... We've seen these others go away to their own lusts and fall back into sin, but Lord, we don't want to do that. We want to do what pleases you. We've seen how good it is to be in your uh, service and to be doing what pleases you. Um, you know, the idea here of a sinful life as opposed to a godly life, uh, I think about this virus that we've had to deal with. And I'm, I myself, I'm a little bit of a germaphobe anyway. I don't know if that's just working with kids and stuff and seeing some of their habits. Um, <laughs> I do the, P, the physical education classes. Um, and again, I've, before this virus thing became a thing, I've always had hand sanitizer with me and everything like that. Um, because they just, some of the things they do, it's, it's amazing to me. I don't know. Um, I have two little ones myself and it's like, why are you doing that? Why are you putting that in your mouth? And then it's the idea of, you know, playing with gym equipment. It's like, why did you decide that licking that dodgeball was the right thing to do? Um, <laughs> so I guess my germophobia might be a little bit, um, understandable. Um, I guess back in the day when we were younger, or some of you were younger, the, the idea for our parents was probably like, you go lick the ball too, let's get this out of the way. Um, <laughs> parents, as, as, as parents, your philosophy, philosophy may have changed, but let me just tell you now that your kid's philosophy is still the same way. All right, so, um, and that idea, I know that's kind of humorous, but in all seriousness, though, uh, when I just see that, even if I'm not necessarily near it, it's just like, mm, that just makes me feel dirty. I'm going to get a little sand, hand sanitizer out and use some of that. Maybe put a little on my face and everything else. Um, and and, and I, when it comes to sin, we God says it's an abomination. He hates sin. So if we have the same heart as the, the, that the Lord has, we should hate it too. We should be disgusted by seeing it, being around it, um, to where we want to run to that san hand sanitizer of God's Word and prayer and just, just clean ourselves from it. Uh, but too many times we see it as appealing, as the hymn mentioned earlier. You know, we just kind of want to, we're still drawn to it. Lord, I don't know why you're so good to me, but I'm still drawn to it. Um, and, you know, the whole idea of this with the, uh, the coronavirus and all these precautions that we needed to take and wear masks, and we get tired of doing that and doing all these things. And in the same way, we can kind of fall into a rut where we, I'm too busy or whatever else it might be to get in God's word, to draw close to him, to, to make his heart my heart. And we might say, you know, me, myself, a mask, I, I don't, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm okay, this isn't affecting me, I'm tired of this mask, I'm tired of the restrictions of have, have, needing to deal with all these things. And, you know, we might have the idea, I don't have any of these pre-existing conditions, how many times have we heard that term in the last few months? Um, but, you know, I'm okay, I can handle this, it's all right if I get close to this, if I don't necessarily partake in it, you know, or where I do partake in it, but just in a little way, um, and we get comfortable in that, and like I said, we kind of get rid of that mask, we kind of throw away the idea of, hey, what does God want, what is His will, um, and then we find out, you know what, we did have the pre-existing condition, all right, we didn't think it would harm us, but our sinful nature is that pre-existing condition, and then before we know it, we're in a world of hurt because we've sought our own lust, we've fallen into sin, and we've got, gotten away from God. 
Uh, so the idea there is we should hate sin just as God does and accept uh, sin for what it is and what he sees it as, not as just something that we can see as momentary fun or pleasure that's not going to hurt us. Um, I, I saw a quote by Billy Sunday that I thought was kind of uh, neat and one that I think should be our view as far as sin. Uh, he said, listen, I'm against sin. I'll kick it as long as I've got a foot. I'll fight it as long as I've got a fist. I'll butt it as long as I've got a head. And I'll bite it as long as I've got a tooth. And when I'm old, fist, fistless, footless, and toothless, I'll gum it till I go home to glory and it goes home to perdition. All right? And I just thought that was, you know, it's, it's humorous, but at the same time, that's what our philosophy should be. I don't want to miss out on God's ways because I'm too worried about having a little bit of momentary fun or seeking what the world says is, is pleasurable. Uh, so those two ideas, missing out on our idea of good um, for God's great, and then missing out on uh, the, the short-term pleasure of sinful living for uh, a lifetime and eternity of blessings through God. How can we defeat that fear of missing out? And it all comes back to the simple issue of faith. And I think I've kind of hinted at that as I've gone through. Uh, but if we look at Psalm 34, and we think about David, he had many promises he had been given from a young age. He had accomplished great things. He had seen God's goodness in his life. And yet, here in this chapter, he's on the run. All right, And I'm sure he's felt like, uh, as he's running from Saul, he's, he's in Philistine territory and he's feeling threatened there. Um, he felt like, I'm sure, he was missing out on things, whether it be at, uh, happenings with his family, um, with his dear friend Jonathan, who he was away from. We've missed that probably over the last few months, some friendship opportunities, um, you know, family opportunities and those kinds of things. I'm sure he felt like he was missing out on some things, but just the faith that is shown in this chapter as we read through it, and I'm going to read all the chapters, it's not too long, or all the verses, it's not too long, uh, just to key in on David's heart and what he sees despite feeling like he's missing out on a lot, and where his faith shows through here. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Again, very positive uh, uh, approach to all these things that were going on. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. You can kind of see it all in that verse there. Uh, going to the Lord, and putting those fears of missing out on something behind him. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cries. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, uh, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. And the idea there, you know, are we missing out on what we want, or are we missing out on what God wants? If we're striving to fill that void of missing out on what we want, worldly ways, our own uh, foolish lusts, then we're going to be left desolate. But if we're seeking what God wants, we're not going to have that fear of, hey, I'm, I have an emptiness, I'm missing something. Uh, because, as it says there, we won't be desolate. The Lord will provide. As it's mentioned there, God uh, has so many blessings He wants to pour out to us. And going back to, to King Asa uh, and the prophet talking to him, one, one verse later on that I didn't mention earlier was, um, the Lord is running to and fro in the earth uh, with the idea of being, wanting to pour out His blessings. Uh, but you acted foolishly, is basically what it says there. And, and God is so willing to give to us uh, because he is faithful to us, uh, but often it's our lack of faith that keeps us um, 
from recognizing that. So again, David's heart here as he's uh, in a difficult time was, Lord, I don't want to miss out on what you have for me. I'm missing out on some things maybe that I think I should uh, be experiencing. But Lord, it's more important that I don't miss out on what you have for me. You have me here for a reason, and I'm going to be faithful to you. Um, just uh, back in uh, Psalm 31, David was talking, um, and he starts with that chapter, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Uh, let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Uh, and it's just his trust is there in the Lord, not in anything else. He continues on, uh, and this should be our thought as well, But I trust in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. And that should really sum up how we feel about um, missing out on things. You know what, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust. You know, my times are in your hand. That idea of, Lord, I'm going to trust your timing. Um, as Second Peter 3, it says, One day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And that's one of our biggest problems when we think about missing out, is our patience. Uh, you know, my timing. I need to do this in my time. But... God's timing is not ours, and sometimes we really struggle to see that. So we need to hold to our faith that God is going to do what He wants to do in our life. It's going to be for our best, not just what we think is good, but for our best if we trust His timing. Habakkuk 2, 3, and 4. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold His soul, which is lifted up, uh, not upright in Him, but the just shall live by faith. Psalm 27, 13, and 14. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And then one more verse here, Hebrews 10, 22, and 23. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And each of those verses has a similar theme. We see um, sticking with it not giving up on what God has for us. We see um, having an unwavering faith regardless of the circumstances. Um, and we see that the Lord is going to come through, which is a key part of that. It's, it's one thing to say, hey, have faith, but it's also another thing to recognize that the Lord has our best in mind. And that is what we need to do. Make sure we are staying faithful to God just as David did in a difficult time or in a time when we feel like we just need to do something. Uh, without call, consulting the Lord, let's wait and have faith. And that's not to say, hey, let's not do anything and just sit back because I'm waiting on the Lord. No, seek His will. Seek His divine will in our life. Whatever decision we make, no matter how small, anytime you're making a choice, you're going to probably have a thought of missing out on something because you're choosing one thing and leaving another. I'm not necessarily even talking about good versus evil, um, but there's always going to be something that you're going to leave on the table, the other choice. It's kind of the idea of, you know, having a utility of uh, our, our funds and things, those things, what do we need to choose to spend it on and budgeting in the right way? Um, it's the same idea of, yes, you're going to miss out on something, but what are you missing out on? Are you missing out on what God has for you or missing out on what you have for yourself? Um, and a lot of times when we think about it, when we say it out loud, it seems obvious to us. God, all-powerful, almighty God, has the best for us in mind, and yet I'm just going to do my own thing in my own strength, which I know fails. Um, no matter how many times, we, many times we fail, we know that God is not going to fail us. So our faith needs to remain strong. Uh, so again, the key to missing out, not missing out on God's best for us is to recognize God's faithfulness in our lives, whether it just be in everyday circumstances, uh, in a crisis, or whatever the circumstances might be. We must maintain an unwavering faith in Him and His timing, plan, and will, just as David did. When we allow God to have His hand on our day and the various moments in it, we can find rest, peace, and satisfaction in how God was able to work through us. If we're so consumed with what do I need to accomplish today, what I need to do, and not giving thought to the Lord, we're not going to find that rest, we're not going to find that peace, and we're not going to find that satisfaction. And a lot of times we're probably driven by that thought. What's going to make me happy? What's going to satisfy me? And because of that, we leave God out of it. So our faith, that is the key uh, to making sure we don't miss out on what God has for us because we're worried about um, what we have for ourselves. And then the third thing uh, that we want to make sure that we're not missing out on uh, is eternity in heaven for hell. And I hope everyone here uh, has that settled. Um, but... When we're talking about things we could miss out on because we're so driven by our own lust, this has to be at the top of the list. 
uh, Revelation 20, 14 and 15, and the death and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and this is where the missing out comes in. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And again, if you haven't had that settled, um, you know, please make sure you take care of that today. I trust that uh, everyone here knows the Lord, but if you don't, uh, please make sure you get that settled today. I know everyone here who knows the Lord is their Savior would hate the thought of someone here or someone in their family missing out on eternity in heaven uh, because they were so blinded by this world and missing out on the things of the world. Uh, so it's important that uh, our faith help us to see uh, God's best for us. It's important that our faith help us to see the benefits of godly living and missing out on worldly pleasures, what the world considers as fun. Um, and it's important to have faith to miss out on eternity separated from God in hell and to enjoy eternity with Him. And um, I'm about finished here, but 1 Timothy chapter 6, this talks about a, a minister and the characteristics of a minister and what they should be, um, a servant, and those kinds of things. And the two kind of contrasts the two sides of dri being driven by our worldly lusts or being driven by pleasing the Lord. And, um, you know, when we look at it that way, just as Peter said, you know, why would I want to go the other option? Why would I want to go the other route? And yet we do. Like I said, we have that pre-existing condition of a sin nature uh, that drives us the wrong way. Um, so we need to draw close to the Lord. You know, how can we fight that? It's the simple things. It's really not anything complicated. It's things we've probably been told from when we were little. You know, how do I do the right thing? You know, it's spend time in God's Word, learning His heart, making His heart our heart, you know, separating ourselves from those uh, things that will feed that fear of missing out, you know, the worldly things that draw us in, um, and, you know, those kinds of things. And then the, uh, the final thing there, again, reading God's Word, praying, uh, not, not feeding that uh, fear of missing out. And then lastly, um, with that, the three things there, I'm oh, sorry, I lost train of thought there, um, but would be uh, engaging in a servant attitude for Christ. You know, focusing on others um, and what we can do for them, serving the Lord doing what he wants. When you're doing those things, when you're learning God's heart and then putting it into practice, you're going to lose a lot of that space to have that fear to fill, that emptiness of, hey, I'm missing out on something. We're going to be filled with faith. We're going to be filled with recognizing God's blessings uh, to where we're full. We're satisfied. We talked about those things I went through, satisfaction, peace, rest. All those things come uh, when we are faithful to the Lord. And, we, and many of you, if you've experienced it, you can attest to that. You can also attest to those times when you were probably seeking your own things and what you wanted to do and how that was unfulfilling. Maybe in the moment it was pleasure and fun and you felt like you were satisfied, but then it just leaves an emptiness again and wanting more. So again, that fear of missing out, it can be ever-changing, like I mentioned before. It can be unrealistic. It can be fleeting. But it can be conquered by an unwavering faith in our never-changing, all-powerful, and everlasting God. When we view our motives, the sins of this world, and eternity through this lens of an unwavering faith and trust in God, um, our perception changes. When we view these two sides, as basically as I've gone through, this path or this path, which are we choosing? What are we being driven by? What are our choices being motivated by? Uh, there's one particular song that I like, and I know pretty much every time I come to speak, I share a, a song or the words to a song that I think are appropriate here and that have been a blessing to me. And I think this is a good one that kind of puts it into perception of you know, I'm not a writer, I'm not a speaker, really, to be honest with you. I'm not um, somebody that's going to be very poetic or anything like that, but I just like a song that kind of can speak to my heart, and hopefully it blesses you as well. But just kind of that idea of what the world sees as missing out and what we should see as missing out. Um, it's called I've Missed Out, so it's pretty, uh, it's pretty fitting for this. But uh, the song goes, We're missing out on the good life according to men of degree. We're missing out on life's normal pleasures by standards of worldly belief. They say we're too narrow, we should learn to just let go. We're all missing out somehow. But when I think of their claims and the pleasures they name, well, I'll admit I have missed out. I've missed out on the heartache of living my life in sin. I've missed out on the sorrow of facing this world without Him. And I have no regrets for things that I've missed, because down deep in my heart, uh, the truth was and is, every day that I've lived, I thank God for what I've missed. The second verse, this world is concerned that Christians are missing out socially. They say that our stand and the book in our hand is not right politically. They call our conviction religious addiction. They claim 
that were all turned around. But we cannot deny one thing they got right. It's true, we have missed out. Again, I've missed out on the heartache of living my life in sin. I've missed out on the sorrow of facing this world without Him. And I have no regrets for things that I've missed, because down deep in my heart, the truth was and is, every day that I've lived, I thank God for what I've missed. And again, I think that sums it up, everything I've said. It might have been jumbled, and you know, hopefully it, it made sense. But that put it, puts it pretty clearly for us. Um, you know, if we look at th- things through the eyes of faith, and again, having the Lord's heart be our heart, and viewing things through His eyes, and having a faithfulness to Him, and knowing that He is faithful to us, as the hymn we sang earlier, we've experienced His goodness. Allow that to draw us closer to Him, to His will, and seeking what He has for us. Uh, allow our faith to help us to see that Truly missing out is when we seek our own will and our own desires. When we think of the idea of the fear of missing out, it's going to drive us to seeking our own will and seeking our own ways. Uh, But when we really think of what we, as a Christian, should not want to miss out on, it's what God has for us. And that fear of missing out, as this song says, can turn to the joy of missing out. You know, I'm not tied to these things of this world. My my hope is not in these things, but it's in God and His faithfulness. And He's He's made so many promises to us in His Word. He's kept those promises. He's been faithful to us. He hasn't failed us, even though we haven't been faithful sometimes and we ha- we've failed Him. Um, but know that He is there for us. And when we seek His ways and not our own, uh, we're not missing out on any good thing uh, because we're doing what God wants us to do. All right, so again, hopefully that's a help to you. I definitely think... Uh, for me, I enjoyed studying this because there's things that I struggle with, um, you know, the idea of in our own strength doing things and, you know, not giving it over to the Lord. Even in the daily moments, not just in a crisis or a certain circumstance, but just in this day, in every little thing, in every little choice that we make, in every part of the day, giving it over to the Lord. Uh, giving the day to the Lord in prayer, making sure we're spending our time in prayer and in His Word to know His heart and to know that... Um, If I'm seeking what He wants, I'm not missing out on any good thing. Uh, But let's pray, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Uh, Dear Lord, we thank You again for this day. Lord, we thank You for the weather, for the coolness, um, for the clouds, Lord, that You've blessed us with today. Lord, we thank You for that. Thank You for this opportunity to gather. Uh, Even though it's a little bit different than what we're used to in the past, just thank You that we're able to to get back to that. Uh, I just pray that You'll bless Uh, Pastor Andrew and his family and uh, any of those who uh, might not be here today that are on vacation or wherever they might be, just help it to be a restful and enjoyable time. Uh, But Lord, help us as we look at these things. And Lord, the idea of missing out. Lord, we've had several months of what we would call um, missing out on things. Uh, But Lord, in our Christian walk, Lord, there are so many things that you don't want us to miss out on. You've promised us in your word so many blessings. Lord, you are just eager and, and so willing to give us your blessings if we Uh, seek them. Uh, So help us to desire to not miss out on uh, what you have for us because we're so worried about missing out on what we have for ourselves. Lord, help our faith to be renewed uh, in you. Help us to do the things uh, in our own lives to help our faith grow strong. Lord, to help us to to recognize the blessings that you've given to us, to spend time uh, reading your word and the promises that you've given to us, the faithfulness that you've shown uh, to so many characters in the Bible, the faithfulness that you've shown to those around us uh, here. Uh, the faithfulness you've shown to us in our own lives. Lord, help that to uh, to be our focus, um, not the focus on so many other things that we may focus on, Lord, but help us to focus on that and to see your faithfulness and return that faithfulness to you. Um, and I just pray also again, as I mentioned, Lord, that if there's anyone here that would not uh, happen to know you as Savior today, that's missing that saving faith, uh, that they would uh, get that settled here today. Uh, to know that they won't miss out on an eternity spent with you um, because they uh, sought their own and end up spending an eternity in hell. Lord, we don't want that for uh, anyone here today. Uh, Lord, we don't want that for anyone. There's so many in this world uh, that we see and that we might get um, upset with because of some of the actions that they take. Uh, but Lord, help, them, help us to see them uh, as you see them, as someone who needs you, that is missing out. Um, not that is doing something that just we get upset about, but someone that is missing out on all that you have for them. So Lord, Lord help us to look at uh, ourselves, those around us, and this entire world, Lord, with the mindset of we don't want them to miss out on what you have. Lord, your way is best. We've seen that, and yet we fall from it. 
Uh, many times we are prone to wander, to go astray from you, but Lord, help us to renew again our faith today. Uh, and we'll thank you for all that you do. In your name we pray, amen. Well, I thank you again uh, for having me. Again, I appreciate uh, Pastor Andrew being willing to let me come and do it. I don't ever know why he does it, but he seems to like that I, that I, I do. Um, but I definitely appreciate you guys listening today. Uh, thank you to those who are watching and viewing in. Uh, it's good to have this opportunity to be able to do it this way. So again, when you're, whenever you're watching this, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.